Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Robert Allen, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Sergeant Megan Wallace. We warmly welcome the family of 2nd Lieutenant Christopher Richard Mahoney, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family and visitors to the memorial. If you are able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. If you're able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 103,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Second Lieutenant Christopher Richard Mahoney. Christopher Mahoney was born on the 25th of April, 1896, in the Adelaide suburb of Hyde Park. One of five children born to tramway manager James Mahoney and his wife Anastasia. Chris received his education at the Christian Brothers College in Wakefield Street and was a keen sportsman playing football for St Francis Xavier College and cricket and baseball for the Mills Woods Clubs. As a young adult, he gained employment with Alliance Insurance Company as a clerk and volunteered his time at St Vincent de Paul's Orphanage in the suburb of Goodwood. Chris Mahoney enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force on the 18th of January, 1916. As he was just 19 years of age, he required his parents' permission to volunteer. He was assigned to the 43rd Battalion and began a short period of training in Australia. In February, he was sent to the non-commissioned officers' school at Mitcham, where he completed a short course to become a sergeant. He embarked with his unit from Adelaide on the 13th of July, 1916, on board the troop ship Siang B. Mahoney arrived in England in early September 1916 and reverted to the rank of private soon after. <clears throat> after further training, he was promoted to corporal on the 14th of November and embarked for France less than two weeks later. Corporal Mahoney arrived on the Western Front shortly after, but was taken ill with a case of the mumps in January of 1917. He spent about a month in hospital behind the lines and rejoined his unit in early February. He was then appointed Vice Sergeant and spent a short period in March at the 3rd Division Training School. Mahoney found himself back with his unit in early April, where, he where it was serving on the front lines of France. By the end of the month, it had been moved to the trenches around Plergstert in Belgium. In July 1917, Mahoney's unit took part in the fighting around the village of Messines. On the 31st of July, the enemy launched a counter-attack and Australian units were hit by enemy artillery and machine gun fire until the early hours of the following morning. The battalion's commanding officer recalled that by the time they were relieved, all ranks were worn with fatigue, soaked to the skin and covered in mud. Mahoney was badly wounded in his right shoulder. He was evacuated to England for treatment in early August. Mahoney spent about a month recovering in hospital before joining a school of instruction for officers in late November 1917. He trained until 1918, when he was moved to Cambridge Officers College, where he completed broad studies and military training to become an officer. Mahoney later wrote to his parents that his time at Cambridge was six months of the happiest days of his life. On the 19th of June, 1918, he was commissioned to the rank of second lieutenant and returned to the Western Front. He joined his unit towards the end of the month when preparations for a major attack on the enemy lines were underway. As the Allies attempted to push the enemy back to the Hindenburg Line, Mahoney was wounded for the second time on the 22nd of August. Though injured, his wounds were not severe and he remained on duty. By the end of August, the Australians had advanced further eastwards to the Somme River, where an audacious attack on Mont Saint Quentin captured part of the enemy stronghold. The next day, the Australians fully captured the Mont, as well as the nearby, nearby town of Perone. Just to the north, Mahoney's 43rd Battalion was advancing in support when he was hit by an enemy bullet. Struck through the heart, he was killed instantly. He was 22 years old. Two years later, in 1920, 
Mahoney's father passed away. His brother wrote to Base Records in Melbourne later that year and described the family's heartbreak. My late father was so badly shocked when he received the news of my brother's death that he never spoke again. He was in good general health, but lived a particularly helpless condition from September 1918 to February 1920 when he died. My mother therefore had to suffer her own grief to nurse my father for that long time. Chris Mahoney's body was never recovered from the battlefield. Today, he is commemorated on the Australian National War, excuse me, on the Australian National Memorial at Villas Breton O, among more than 10,000 other Australians with no known grave. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour to my right among almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. His photograph is displayed today by the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Second Lieutenant Christopher Richard Mahoney, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man laying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director and staff, thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support of the Memorial's development project. We wish you all a very pleasant evening.
Thank you.